So I'm going to demonstrate how to mat a piece of artwork. This is a pastel drawing that we're going to mat and I need to measure it first. So this looks like it's 24 inches um, wide by 18 inches tall. I'm going to use the cutter in order to cut my piece of mat board in order to mat my piece. I'm over by the paper cutter. I'm ready to cut my mat board. One thing that you need to notice about the mat board is like right now I can see that there's kind of a streak and there's like some um, marks from either somebody's hand or um, like here there's like a really big mark that somebody made on this. I'm going to use this back side because the back side actually is really nice except for these parts here which I can actually erase. But you don't actually want to use something that would be this scuffed up for a mat on your piece. I am going to um, actually cut my piece of mat board two inches larger on either side. So I have that 24 by 18 inch piece and I'm going to lift the blade on the uh, paper cutter and then I'm going to make sure that I've measured and if you come closer here you can actually see I'm um, lining it up on 20 on the 26 inch mark and then technically there's a line that comes all the way down the paper cutter and what that does is it actually is going to make sure that i keep my dimension at 26 inches the entire way on the piece um, i also noticed that this is kind of going uphill a little bit because there's actually a piece underneath here so i want to make sure i move anything out of the way that's creating any kind of problem with my paper cutter. Um, so I'm going to hold this really tight and I'm going to take the blade and I'm just going to push it down. Then I want to actually, I'm just going to slide this up because it was a little bit longer than what um, the paper cutter was. And I need to make sure that I'm lining up on that 26 inch line, holding it really tight again, and I'm just going to cut that last little bit off. Um, and now I can actually cut to my next dimension. So again, it was 24 inches one way, so which is why I did the 26, and it's 18 inches another way, so now I'm going to do 20 on this other side. Um, and I actually have like a little bit of a flaw on this corner, so I'm actually going to turn my um, board around so that I have really nice crisp corners for when I'm matting. I want things to look as professional as possible. So that means I don't want any flaws in my piece as possible. So here I lined up on 20. I'm holding my hand up. Use the um, slicing part of the paper cutter to cut my piece. And then I'm going to actually put the um, safety back over here just because technically you could really get hurt. Um, you could technically cut off a finger, so you want to make sure that you're actually putting the guard back over the cutter when you're done with it. Um, now that I have my piece, I'm going to show you actually how to put the drawing on the piece and protect it so that it's ready for contest or whatever display we're using. So here I have my drawing, and then I have my piece of mat board that I'm going to put it on. And what I want to do is I'm actually going to erase any of the flaws that are in my piece of mat board. And I have to have a really clean eraser to do this um, so that it doesn't like mar up the um, piece that I'm working with. Oops, and there. I'm going to use this other eraser because I didn't like how that eraser, that eraser left a little bit of a residue on my mat board and I want to make sure that I don't have any residue as much as I possibly can because we should have this as pristine as possible because again presentation um, means everything and just like we would present something professional for something else, the presentation should be like really professional looking with no errors in it. Um, then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to lay my piece over the top of here and you'll notice because I did two inches I have a one inch border on my entire 
um, piece. Normally I don't work on the paper cutter, but for the sake of just being all in one spot, we're going to do that. Um, you want to definitely make sure that your area is completely clean. In order to um, have this area clean, I put some pieces of newsprint on top of my paper cutter so that the paper cutter doesn't get dirty when I turn my drawing upside down on it. And what I'm going to do is put pieces of tape along the edges of my piece before I put it on the mat board. So here I'm taking pieces of double-sided tape and I'm just going to put the pieces of double-sided tape on the back side of my drawing in order to float mount it. There are a couple different ways that you can mount a piece of artwork. Um, this is the easiest way of doing it, um, but it is not necessarily the best way of doing it. And I want to make sure that my double-sided tape does not have any bumps in it, because if there's any bumps in my tape whatsoever, um, that will show when my piece has been um, fully matted. So again, I'm making sure that I don't have any bubbles in this tape at all. And I'm gonna run out of tape here in just a second. So I'm gonna to have to switch to another roll. And here I got a little bit of a bubble, but it came off with my finger, so it was actually okay. And I'm making sure that I'm using my fingernails to put that down, um, just because if you accidentally get too much, oh, and there's a bubble on this one here, I can see a bubble right there. So I'm actually gonna peel this whole piece off and luckily I didn't go very hard. You can see it's tearing the paper a tiny bit. You wanna go very, very gently if you ever have to take anything off because you could damage your paper as you're doing that. So here I'm going to take another piece of tape and put it down over the top. And I'm gonna put one in the bottom as well. Then I'm gonna take my piece and um, put it onto my piece of mat board. I have my drawing, I've got my tape on the back, um, and I'm gonna actually eyeball this, and hopefully you can tell, like, there's about an inch of space all the way around my piece. And I wanna make sure that my entire piece is equal, or as equal as I can make it, before I push those tape pieces down, um, because once I push the tape down, I'm not going to be able to push it again. And I'm actually going to take a piece of newsprint and put the newsprint over the top of this because this happens to be chalk pastel and it's going to get on other things if I'm not careful. So it didn't actually get onto the um, newsprint, um, but I'm actually pressing underneath here and because I'm on top of the newsprint it's not actually smearing my drawing. Okay so here it's actually um, on my piece and the next part that I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put some mylar over the top of this to protect the chalk pastel from being smeared or like wiped off of my piece as it's in the display. One other thing that you want to think about when you're matting work is you want to think about how the piece might look best. So, for example, this piece we chose black mat board because it actually looked better on the black than it would if it had just been on the white by itself. So you want to think about that as you're selecting mat board before you actually tape the piece down. I just wanted to make sure I talked about that because we already had the black mat board selected. Since we're putting mylar over this, we want to make sure that we're actually having the artist sign and date their work in the lower right hand corner and then we can actually like wrap the piece with the mylar. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little bit of mylar over the top of the piece that we have here. And again, it's to protect this piece because it happens to be chalk pastel. Um, and we wanna make sure that nobody's able to um, touch the piece that we have. So we're just going to take a little bit of the mylar and make it larger than the piece by a, a couple of inches and we're going to take a scissors and cut the mylar down and then we're going to adhere the mylar to the piece. Here I'm just going to, I'm cutting 
the mylar and if I'm steady enough, I can actually make one cut with the scissors and slide it sort of like how I would then. What I wanna do is I'm gonna put the larger roll leaned up against the corner so it doesn't get all crinkled. And I'm going to flip my piece over very carefully so that I can cut the other side. So here I've got way too much left over and I'm going to just again, cut about three or four inches and slide that scissors. Um, it, it went, it wobbled a little bit there on me, but that's okay. I'm gonna take a piece of mat board and put it underneath my piece because what I wanna do is I wanna take a ruler and I'm gonna cut a 90 degree angle off of this so that I can actually tape the pieces of mylar in here and make a really nice corner. Before I go and cut my corners off, I wanna make sure that I have at least a couple of inches on every side and I'm going to actually take my ruler and notice there's another piece of mat board underneath here because whatever surface I'm on, I don't wanna cut the surface. Um, again, right now I'm on the paper cutter, but you're probably gonna be on a larger table as you do this. So I'm gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna cut along the yep. edge of this ruler and I'm actually gonna do it twice before I move here just to make sure that it's completely off before I do that. Um, I did bump my piece a little bit, but that's actually okay. I didn't actually hit anything. I just um, moved it while I was cutting with the X-Acto knife. So then I would go to all four sides. I'm just going to rotate this a little bit so that I can cut this next side. And as I do that, I'm gonna make sure that this edge doesn't go over the top of my piece as I'm doing that. So I'm just gonna hold it here. I'm gonna put my ruler down again and I'm gonna cut again as I'm doing that. And there goes my piece. I'm gonna make sure that they're lined up and I'm going to rotate this again. When we adhere the mylar onto the piece, um, a lot of times we use these little sticky dots. They're like Velcro adhesives. You can also use the um, one that's in a long strip um, it's a little bit easier to use the sticky dots themselves or the Velcro dots themselves, but if all we have left is the um, Velcro in the long tape form, that'll be fine as well. So I'm gonna take um, at least six of these, and I would probably do with a piece this large, I would probably do at least three of these pieces per side. I normally um, put these together and then what I'm gonna do is peel part of it off. So again, I'm going to make sure that I've lined my pieces up. I'm going to make sure that I'm not over on the corners and I'm just going to take that piece, I just moved it, so I'm gonna move back. And then I'm gonna make sure that before I adhere this down that I have enough on all of my corners so that I don't accidentally end up with not enough on one side. So I'm gonna pull it pretty tight and then I'm going to make sure that it adheres down and I'm immediately gonna to go to the opposite side. So I'm going to turn my piece around and I'm going to put my one piece there and I'm gonna to have to get a couple more pieces of the Velcro dot tape in order to make this work. And I'm actually gonna do two at a time so that I don't accidentally end up with too much that last time I did that, I had a little bit of an error that I had to fix. And so I'm gonna pull this off. I'm going to pull on this one side, make sure that, oh, and that was actually, it was, I didn't measure quite enough. So I'm gonna have to put another one on this side and I'm gonna pull and just stick that on there. And I can pull this other part off. This other little part's probably gonna stay there and it might work with this other side because it's a little bit taller on that side, so it'll probably be fine. Um, so now I'm gonna take on this side, I'm gonna make sure that I'm underneath my mylar and I'm gonna peel off the tape. Before I press that down, I wanna make sure I have my third piece on this middle section 
and I'm just going to take my sticky dots, go underneath here. I'm going to pull them really, really tight, and I'm going to just with my fingers um, press that down. And then what I can do is I can do my opposite sides, and I'm actually, because this side is so long, I'm going to do four dots, um, and then I will press it down. And I'm going to measure before I do that. I have to go kind of close to this edge in order for me to do that. So I want one really, really close to the corners and wherever I put those other two, doesn't really matter. So here is my um, final adhered piece. And then you can see I've got protection on here. I can rub on this and it doesn't matter that um, I had my hand on my piece. It didn't smear any of my chalk pastel. Um, and it's gonna be permanently preserved like that. If I wanted to hang it on a wall, all I would need to do is put a hanger on the back.